Okay, so in your laboratory kit, you're going to find one of these, this Carson MicroBrite Pro Pocket Microscope. Uh, and this is what it, this is the one in the box, it goes with this kit. Um, this is what it looks like. Okay, so the, the scope has a little light. Well, you're going to have to put a battery uh, into it, like here. It should come with the battery. Uh, put the battery in. You have a little light switch on the side. It turns on this light on the bottom. Just one light on this particular model. You have two knobs. This knob here is the zoom, right? So the magnification knob. So I would say always start with it pushed to the lowest magnification. To begin with, if you want to zoom in on things, you can slide it over, but typically keep it like this. Uh, then um, this is the focus. So this is how you're going to focus back and forth is use this. Now in your kit, what you're going to also have is a little stage like this that I made. Okay, so I designed this, cut it out the, uh, of wood on a laser cutter, uh, and then we attached a little slide, or uh, sorry, a uh, mirror on the bottom. So it's just a little mirror, and there's a knob on the side, and you can angle the mirror, um, and that's going to help you reflect this light back up at your slide, and that way you're going to see it better. In your kit, you will have a counting slide called a C chip. Um, essentially a hemocytometer. So it's a slide that has etched grids on it and the cover slips are attached as opposed to a glass one. We have to put the cover slip on uh, yourself. They're attached to it. So they end up looking like this and they have little loading chambers and you load your samples into it, you know, with a pipette, you would load the sample into that chamber, not sideways like that. Obviously it'd be, it'd be flat and you add a little bit in. Typically you only need like a, a drop, not like a dropper full, but like one drop of liquid is going to be enough. You have these little half moon shaped areas and then it gets kind of sucked under the cover slip and into the grid. So what I'm going to do is kind of give you the basics of how it would look to get this set up and then I'm going to um, take the uh, camera and then attach it and then do some focusing with it and show you what that would look like as you adjust the um, mirror to kind of get a nice picture. Okay, so the idea is your slide has two areas um, many times when you sample your experiments, you're going to have two or three um, different treatments going. So you might have like a control, then you have like two different salt concentrations or sugar concentrations or other sorts of things that you're going to look at or light concentrations if you're doing the, uh, the algae experiment, or whatever it is that you're doing. And so you're going to have to read each of them. You can't use the exact same grid until it's been cleaned out. So I have a separate instruction on how to clean this out. So it's got to be clean every single time you use it. On the little stage, I have, the, have little cutouts on the side and the slide, it's going to pop out there, but it essentially, it fits kind of right through and it sort of, does, it's not locked in place. Sorry, whoop, there you go. It's not locked in place. There's a wiggle room. There's a little bit of movement, but not too much. So it's going to, it's going to pretty much keep the grid lined up with the scope. And then when you take the scope, and put it onto this little stage. Again, it has a small amount of movement. You can move it back and forth a little, but again, if you push it all the way forward and then pull it back slightly, you'll, you'll pretty much line up almost directly with the slide and that grid. So it will make it a lot easier for you to see things. So now what you would do is uh, look through here, first off, and adjust the light. So it should look really bright. If it looks dark, then you're going to turn this knob so you can angle the mirror so that it's reflecting the light back up through. So it should look very bright. And then you'll move it around until you see what looks like a hashes, like a grid. And then you'll start to use your focus. So you'll use this ring here, and then you'll be focusing, which you, can, you can't see right now, but I'll just have a separate video where I do the focus. Um, and it looks very, very clear. I, I can see it right through like that. If you wanted to zoom in, then you just hold this in place and you'd use the zoom to zoom in. Maybe it's zoomed in you know, too much and you want to zoom back out. But this way, depending on what it is you're looking at, you will probably have to, you'll have to refocus if you zoom. So it's not going to stay there, but it's going to be kind of close, right, to stay. One of the things you're going to have in the lab as an algae culture, right, in a little tube like this, you need to pick this up separately um, in my class. Uh, and, and you're going to use this for some experiments that you're going to do. And you're going to be counting the cells in the algal culture on this slide. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you um, how to use this to focus on, count the cells and what they're supposed to look like. So you know that you're looking at the right thing. Um, sometimes people will be uh, in a classroom with students. They'll be looking at something under the microscope. 
talking, writing things down, and then I will check and look, and they are not looking at all at what they're supposed to be looking at. It's something completely different. So what I'm going to do is then video what the cells are supposed to look like. So if you see this, uh, you'll say, oh yes, that is also what I see, or no, that's nothing like what I'm seeing, which means you're probably not looking at the correct thing. So I'm going to show you then what these algae cells look like, and then you'll... They are, you can see the cells are swimming around. Okay. Move it back to the grid. Da -da. Okay, and there you go. Okay, so now what you're seeing is there's your grid, and you can see these little cells are actually swimming around. All right, there's stuff moving around here. So what is it you're going to have to look for? What is you going to count? How can you adjust this a little bit? So what you want to do is you can see the grid. There's all these small grids. The uh, it's going in and out of focus partly because I'm moving the microscope, one, and then secondly, uh, I'm fighting a little bit of my own phone's autofocus. So what that's what you're gonna have to do as well, most likely, is deal with your phone and how it wants to focus. Okay, so you see this area here. You've got, sorry, I'm gonna try to move it. There are essentially 16 larger squares, and then there's little like rectangular ones in between them. So, um, so if you're kind of looking, from the top, okay, you go like four big squares across, four big squares down, right? So that means there's 16 squares, okay? That, this whole area is an area you can count, okay? So in this whole area right now, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think one just left, seven little swimming euglena cells, okay? If I were to count individual squares, the first one has, well, one guy is just coming into it, Second guy has nobody, he's almost in it. Third guy has one into it. Nobody in the next one. I'm going down, there's one. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, zero. So if you're counting all these squares individually, they either have zero or like one little euglena cell in them. So if I look at all 16 of them combined, this whole entire area, right now I see three, four, five, six, maybe seven. So this is what you need to know. When you're counting, are you looking at these teeny weeny little squares? Are you looking at these sort of medium sized squares broken into group of 16? Or are you taking the entire group of 16 and counting that whole entire area as just one? So that's something that has to be decided upon before you start counting. My uh, advice to you is in our particular lab because of the density of the cells you're going to just use this whole entire area like all 16 combined and you're going to just use these little grids to help you count like to keep track of which ones you've counted and which ones you haven't because you can see they're they're moving around um, i haven't even really zoomed in you know yet i can actually zoom in a little bit better um, later what's going to happen is your um, phone has weight to it so it's going to pull on the microscope and so you're going to have to support it uh, and if you don't support it then it's going to keep pulling you out of focus so you're going to have to keep your hand under the scope and then uh, it'll make it much easier to to focus in so here i'm just kind of zooming out right now actually i have to refocus I'm kind of zooming back in again now i'm using the uh, phone that there i use my phone zoom to zoom back in, so you can see a, a lot more area in this video is being covered. So you can do that as well. The other thing what you should probably do is just take photographs. So once you get what you want to see in your field of view, go ahead and take a picture. And when you have that photograph, then you know exactly, you know, you could just look at it later on and, and do counts for the cells and make it a lot easier for yourself, uh, as opposed to trying to do it while you're hand holding it and focusing and everything else. So that's kind of a little introduction to what the slide looks like. You're actually, you're looking at this through. I'm going to undo it. Take right now, as you can see, you know, I'm looking at this through. That's through the Carson little pocket microscope. You can kind of see there's a clip on the top. I just took it out of the clip and there's the little counting slide underneath it. So that's, that's what we were just looking through. Right? You can see it looks, it looks really good. Um, if you have a lot of cells, you might want to use those little small uh, grids, and if you have very few cells, you're going to want to use the big grids. The main thing is in your actual instructions, I give you notes as to their size and their volume, 
and you're going to have to use that. You can kind of can see here when you're looking through. So this is exactly what I'm talking about in a photograph. Um, you may use, sorry, this entire area. Okay, so all, see, four times four, all 16 of these as one. That's what I was saying to do right now. So if I said, if I use this whole area, I was counting about seven cells moving around in that area. If you were just counting individual squares, I had either zero or one. So you can kind of, you can see that. And then I said, in your lab instructions, I'm giving you the exact volumes of every, of the like corner square, how much is that, this whole entire area? And then how much is the area of one single individual square, like this little, this one right here? I have those as well. So you have to refer to your lab instructions for that. Okay, so right now what you're seeing is my camera, my phone, you know, is attached to a little clip that attaches to your little Carson microscope. And it's looking at the hemocytometer that you're given in the lab. And what I'm about to do is I'm gonna load in the sample of algae into the chamber. Um, I'm actually blocking it with the microscope, so I'm gonna have to tilt it here. Hold on, sorry. Okay, so I'm, what I'm gonna do is actually lift the whole thing up and then load it. There we go, okay. Putting it back down. Oh, there they are. You can see the cells are swimming around, okay. Move it back to the grid. Da -da. Okay, and there you go. Okay, so now what you're seeing is there's your grid, and you can see these little cells are actually swimming around. All right, there's stuff moving around here. So what is it you're going to have to look for? What is it you're going to count? How can you adjust this a little bit? So what you want to do is you can see the grid. Ha there's all these small grids. The uh, it's going in and out of focus partly because I'm moving the microscope, one, and then secondly, uh, I'm fighting a little bit of my own phone's autofocus. So what that's what you're going to have to do as well, most likely, is deal with your phone and how it wants to focus. Okay, so you see this area here. You've got, sorry, I'm going to try to move it. There are essentially 16 larger squares, and then there's little, like, rectangular ones in between them. So, um, so if you're kind of looking from the top, okay, you just flick four big squares across, four big squares down, right? So that means there's 16 squares, okay? That, this whole area is an area you can count, okay? So in this whole area right now, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think one just left, seven little swimming euglena cells, okay? If I were to count individual squares, the first one has, well, one guy is just coming into it, Second guy has nobody, he's almost in it. Third guy has one into it. Nobody in the next one. I like going down, there's one. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, zero. So if you're counting all these squares individually, they either have zero or like one little euglena cell in them. So if I look at all 16 of them combined, this whole entire area, right now I see three, four, five, six, maybe seven. So this is what you need to know. When you're counting, are you looking at these teeny weeny little squares? Are you looking at these sort of medium sized squares broken into a group of 16? Or are you taking the entire group of 16 and counting that whole entire area as just one? So that's something that has to be decided upon before you start counting. My uh, advice to you is in our particular lab because of the density of the cells you're going to just use this whole entire area like all 16 combined and you're going to just use these little grids to help you count like to keep track of which ones you've counted and which ones you haven't because you can see they're they're moving around um, i haven't even really zoomed in you know yet i can actually zoom in a little bit better um, later what's going to happen is your um, phone has weight to it so it's going to pull on the microscope and so you're going to have to support it uh, and if you don't support it then it's going to keep pulling you out of focus so you're going to have to keep your hand under the scope and then uh, it'll make it 
much easier to, to focus in. So here I'm just kind of zooming out right now, actually. I have to refocus, kind of zooming back in again. Now I'm using the uh, phone, that, there I use my phone zoom to zoom back in so you can see a, a lot more area in this video is being covered. So you can do that as well. The other thing what you should probably do is just take photographs. So once you get what you want to see in your field of view, go ahead and take a picture. And when you have that photograph, then you know exactly, you know, you could just look at it later on and, and do counts for the cells and make it a lot easier for yourself, uh, as opposed to trying to do it while you're hand holding it and focusing and everything else. So that's kind of a little introduction to what the slide looks like. You're actually, you're looking at this through. I'm gonna undo it, take right, as you can see, you know, I'm looking at this through. That's through the Carson little pocket microscope. You can kind of see there's a clip on the top. I just took it out of the clip and there's the little counting slide underneath it. So that's that's what we were just looking through. Right? You can see it looks, it looks really good. Um, if you have a lot of cells, you might want to use those little small uh, grids and if you have very few cells you're going to want to use the big grids the main thing is in your actual instructions I give you notes as to their size and their volume and you're going to have to use that you can kind of can see here when you're looking through so this is exactly what I'm talking about in a photograph um, you may use sorry this entire area okay so all see four times four, all 16 of these as one. That's what I was saying to do right now. So if I said, if I use this whole area, I was counting about seven cells moving around in that area. If you were just counting individual squares, I had either zero or one. So you can kind of, you can see that. And then I said, in your lab instructions, I'm giving you the exact volumes of every of the like corner square how much is that this whole entire area and then how much is the area of one single individual square like this little this one right here i have those as well so you have to refer to your lab instructions for that